Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Reconnect, my weekly series where I help you reconnect to yourself, to your soul, to the energy in your environment. Really just, yeah, reconnect to yourself so that you can embody your power and purpose. So I'm just going to wait for a few minutes while people log on and join me. Let me know when you're here. Um, I'm going live using StreamYard again today, so you'll need to click the link um, so I can see who you are when you're making comments so that I can, you know, I've got a, a name to the face, so to speak. So I'm just going to um, join myself, um, put this on my Facebook profile so that um, I can be seen in other places as well. So, yeah, we're here this morning to talk about moving beyond fear. Um, living in fear is something that I used to do a lot. Um, and it really didn't work out too well for me. So I just wanted to talk about what it's like to live in fear. We don't always recognize we're living in fear and how we can move beyond that so that we can feel abundant and manifest the life of our dreams because we can't do that when we're operating from a place of fear. It's just, it's just not possible, unfortunately. So let me know when you're logging in live. Let me know if you're watching this on replay. Let me know where you are. I like to see where people are logging in from, you know, what kind of um where people how people are finding this useful and let me know if you want want anything else you know let me know what you're interested in i um for those of you who don't know me have never watched me before my name is Faye Semple and i am a spiritual and energy embodiment coach so i help women to access the part of their soul access their true purpose and live that out but i work with energy in many ways so it's not just our internal energy it's not just the energy of us it's also how we sort of plug into the network so we plug into energy not just in ourselves but we also plug into the energy of the world and the cosmos you know we interact with light we interact with earth energy there are many many things that constitute an abundant and happy life and i work with the energy metaphysical energy um, that underpins all life and all creation in many respects. Makes me sound a bit godlike, but obviously I'm not. Um, but yeah, so I work with the energy of the earth. I work with people's chakras. I work with their aura. We work with mindset. We work with emotions. Um, because even though I've always been able to see um, energy, aura, chakras, energy in the landscape, how our bodies respond to it, how our emotions respond to it on an energetic level, that didn't mean, you know, for many years that my life was perfect. It was far from it. I lived in scarcity. I ended up in an abusive marriage. I was an alcoholic. Everything went belly up, basically. Um, so, but I, um, you know, realized that the common denominator of that disaster that was my life was actually me. And I realized that, you know, I really need to work it on my energy and my mindset and work on these deep connections so that I could then help other women do the same. Because it's a bit of a shock waking up one morning with um, sort of two children finding yourself in an abusive marriage and um, in a shocking state and thinking, my God, you know, and I've got to this age. And if I don't hurry up and sort myself out, you know, there's little check boxes that are another week of my life. are soon going to start disappearing. My, and my dreams and my goals, if I'm not careful, are going to die with me. And I, and I know many women reach that point in their life. And these are the women that I tend to help with. So, you know, it's, it's great. It's, it's fun work. You know, just this week in my client group, one of my clients reported that I had a big windfall out of the blue. And she very funnily said, you know, and nobody had to die for it, which is really good. It wasn't a big question of will. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we can, we can attract abundance, but we have to feel abundant to attract abundance. We have to feel um, wealthy within our frequency we have to emit the frequency of wealth and abundance to attract money opportunities love whatever it is that we um, are scarce of because money it really is just you know money is energy and all the physical trappings of abundance are just energy and I can guarantee that if you haven't got enough money that you probably also don't have enough love or enough fulfilling relationships or enough opportunities abundance is a whole package and we need to resonate at the frequency of abundance some people talk about this a lot an awful lot um but actually the how of it is often you know it's really it's a subtle shift but it's a very powerful shift and one of the things that i realized very early on of course is that fear is a big block to abundance fear is a massive block and my whole life has manifested based on fears because let's face it not many of us are brought up with enough money 
with enough love, with enough support, with enough opportunities, we often feel at a loss. We often feel like we're just being floating around on an ocean. We don't we don't know how to adult. We don't know how to do lots of things. We're not brought up and we're not educated to manage our thoughts, manage our habits, manage our emotions. And that is crucial to attracting abundance. So we have to remove the habits that we do have and that we have to replace them with something else. It is simple. No one says it's easy. I will never say that it's been an easy journey, but it is actually really simple. It is actually about being focused and it is just sticking to what you want. So let me know you're here. I can see people are watching. You'll have to um, say, give StreamYard permission to use your name so I can see you. So that when you comment, I know who I'm talking to because, you know, a little blank face, it's very impersonal, isn't it? I like to know I'm, you know, I like to know I'm talking to real people and making a difference and I'm sliding off my chair again. Um, it's really comfy when I'm working in it. It's just when I have to sit up and do the lives. So, so hands up, who has lived in fear? of I can't end the relationship I'll be I'll be I'll be um you know on my own oh I didn't spend that money because guarantee a big bill will come in just after I spent that money on something that's luxurious or a treat so I can't spend any money on myself oh I didn't walk into that crowded room because everybody's going to look at me um I can't push myself forward I can't sell who will they think I am I can't offer to you know I can't sell in my business because who are they going to think that I'm yeah, B. Yeah. <laughs> Hands up who's lived in fear. Absolutely. Got the T-shirt, bought the book, starred in the movie, fucked everything up. Yeah, been there, done that. So, but living in fear, you know, we learn those energetic habits very young. We learn that through our childhood experience, our experiences that we look at our family having. Uh, you know, I, I was brought up in... um sort of an extended family. My parents divorced when I was six, when my mum then took me and my brother, and we went to live with back with her parents. And there was a real top money mentality in that house, I can tell you, and a very misogynistic attitude in that house. So, uh, you know, my brother was lavish with gifts and attention. I got squat diddly because I was a girl. It wasn't my mother, but my grandparents, you know, my, my, my nan who managed the family finances, kept everything I very wisely kept everything logged she kept what she spent down to the last um I would say pence and shilling as it was when I when I first started living there but she logged everything my granddad had come from actually nothing but had built up a nice little a nice little business he got quite successful but he was a real spend spender he would have just spent it all so my nan on the other hand was extremely frugal so I had real messed up expectations about life I had ex real messed up expectations about what I was worth um and how money worked you know money's simple really you have some of it and everybody else has the rest that's it that's how money works it comes it goes but we get hung up about it and, it, and the money gets tied up in our self-worth but it's tied up around often scarcity mentality and scarcity mentality is rooted in fear it's rooted in fear of I'm not good enough fear of I'm not going to survive. It's rooted around a fear of survival instinct. So I want to talk about, about how that shows up. So I'm going to ask you a few little questions that I want you to think about, really. So I say when we're trying to manifest, we really want to be manifesting from a place of abundance and joy rather than a place of fear. Because if we're manifesting from fear, Focus, energy goes where focus flows. So if we're thinking, oh, I can't do that because this dreadful thing, you know, if I spend money, I'm going to be broke next month. That's where our energy is focused. You know, that's what we're focused on. That's where our energy is going. That's what will happen. And it takes it takes a leap of faith and bravery. So it's faith over fear. It does take a leap of faith to start changing our habits to say, I'm not going to be available for that reality anymore. But we can't make that leap of faith when we're still rooted in fear. So it's really a question of niching down on your thoughts and actions and emotions that are stemmed in fear. So take some time to think about what are your biggest fears in life? You know, for some people, it's, oh, my God, I'm going to be, you know, poor all my life or I'm going to be single all my life or no one's going to love me or what are your biggest fears? Because these fears are often held very, very unconsciously. 
but they inform every single action that we take. They inform every single decision that we make. And we really have to dig down deep into what your fears are. So let me know, you know, if you're going to put them in the car, what are your biggest fears? You know, is it that you're never going to be successful? Is it that, um, you know, you're never going to attract the partner of your dreams, that you're never going to be get the job that you want, that maybe, you know, it might be anything, but these fears will mean that we approach life with timidity. We, we don't give our all to task. We hang back. We keep one foot in fear and one foot in action. So we hope for the best, but we prepare for the worst. Because, and everybody tells us around, around everybody around us tells us this, don't they? Don't be, dream big. Oh, you know, prepare for disappointment if you're going to do that. This is because so many of us are brought up without enough love, without enough money, without enough support. So all our peers, the reflection around us is reflecting the same thing, the same scarcity, the same fears. So when we bounce a ball to get a sense of what's going on in the universe, we might ask a friend, oh, I think I'm going to start my own business because I want to earn you know i want to earn 10k months or i want to become a millionaire and our friend who's also been brought up in not enough money not enough love not enough support not enough opportunity will then turn around and go oh don't know if you ought to do that tame it a bit high you might get disappointed as if as if disappointment is actually the worst thing that could happen to you because it so surely isn't you know and if we go through life trying to avoid pain and avoid disappointment we're not going to get very far because we will always encounter pain and we will always encounter disappointment. It's how we deal with it that is the big thing. But fear can even stop you making that leap to start with. So think about the biggest fears in your life. You know, we, we've all heard this, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. I have to work really hard for money. All those things are held within this deep belief system, let's say, that's so unconscious, but it informs how we show up. It informs the energy that we emanate. Do we emanate courage? Do we emanate freedom? Do we emanate abundance? Or do we emanate desperation and timidity and not being able to shine our light and go, please, universe, please, please, can I have some more? When, you know, any price you ask of life, it will give you. You can ask for very little and life will pay you that. You can ask for a lot and life will pay you that. It's It really is that simple. So, but your belief, in that is what makes the difference. And if your beliefs are rooted in fear, you need to change those thought patterns. So think about what your biggest fears are in life. How is that How is that showing up for you? You know, are you reluctant to put yourself out there? Are you reluctant to, um, you know, apply for jobs that you think you're not qualified for? Or are you reluctant to go out there and uh, shout about your business on social media? You know, what are you reluctant to do? Because that... Think about what fear is behind that. You know, many people have a fear of judgment, don't they, being judged, um, particularly now in cancel culture and freedom of speech. You know, sometimes we come on and think, oh, I don't say anything because someone's going to, you know, have a backlash against what I've said. But, you know, freedom of speech is there. So basically we can say whatever we want and the other person has the right to say whatever they want. How you react to that is your choice. So. And let me just make sure I can, I've disappeared on the other screen. I just like to see, so i make sure I can see the comments in case they're not coming up on my mobile. So, yes, yeah, so think about the biggest fears that you're holding in your life. And then think about where those fears come from. Now, most of them come from our parents or they come from our peers. So, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Um, you'll never be successful. Women can't do that, whatever it may be. And I was watching a program on telly last night, actually. It's called The Repair Shop where this woman had brought in a um, gramophone that her grandfather had made. And then, you know, she said when she left school, she said to her dad, oh, you know, I'm going to be an engineer. Um, and she was elderly now. And her dad had said, oh, no, women women aren't engineers. You know, so uh, we, 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 we often held ourselves back by what other people tell us is possible. So um, what's it about? B, sorry. Biggest fear is giving someone hope. I'm a crystal dealer and it not working for them. Yeah, I mean, crystals crystals do work. They do enhance our energy and our belief is everything. Um, so it's almost their belief that will trigger the result. But you're not responsible for the results. You know, we have to make that perfectly clear when we're working 
with um you know in coaching or in healing people that you're responsible for showing up you're responsible for delivering your best you're responsible for giving the best service that you can but you're not responsible for the results they are responsible your client is responsible for their results you know if someone wants to heal they will heal if deep down they don't want to heal because of some secondary benefits they're getting from not being well they won't heal it's as simple as that so it's all in their mindset so if you tell someone you know this will heal you and they believe you and you say it with confidence it's their belief that really takes the action crystals just enhance that process they're like magnifiers or prisms yes they all carry their own energy but you know their belief is everything so you know the mind the uh, placebo effect as it is called you know is a marvelous thing because it has healed people of incredible conditions um, just through their belief so where do those fears come from is it do those fears come from your parents or say do, the, do these deep fears come from your peers is it a fear that's held in society um you know there are there are, there are you know all sorts of fears going around in society about what we can do if we're you know a woman or a person of color or there are all sorts of fears going around in society some of them based on reality the reality for some people but they're not based on the reality for others you know, so it's, so we we can look at a job lot of negativity and assume that it applies to everybody when it when it often doesn't. So think about where those fears come from, and then think about how those fears have um, affected your life decisions so far. What decisions have you made based on fear? Oh, I better not take that opportunity because I don't feel up to it. I better not, you know, put my put myself forward because. Oh, do you know, it might all go wrong. Think about where you've had the, the universe has presented with you with opportunities, but you've made decisions based upon fear. And think about how things might have been different if you hadn't based them on fear. Some things would have worked out. Some things would have been a learning opportunity. We don't use the word failure because there is no such thing. But it would have all have been a step towards creating a different reality for you, creating a different future. And you only get good at working through fear. By working through fear confidence is built by doing stuff not by sitting back reading and getting ready your confidence is only built by doing it yes there are techniques to help you build your confidence like mental rehearsals which is a deep form of visioning um which is something that i help women with within my programs but you know at the end of the day you actually have to do it you won't get anywhere if you don't do it so so think about the decisions that you've made based on fear and how those the situations so what situations have those fears manifested in your life so far i said i was brought up in a, in a um quite a misogynistic uh, patriarchal family extended family as as many women were you know at that point in time in childhood in the 70s you know and so but my expectations seeing the relationships within that family my expectations of relationships were very low and on, on a conscious level although i said i'm never going to be downtrodden i'm never going to do those things on an unconscious level when i went into relationships as an adult i find myself very easy slipping into that traditional female role and becoming the doormat and becoming and i and i consciously was adamant that i wasn't doing it but when i looked deeply at the reality of my life and was totally honest with myself i had manifested my worst fear because my decisions had been made from a place of fear i don't want to be alone i don't want this person to leave me or whatever you know because i wasn't confident in myself i was looking for outside sources to assist me so you know i manifested my worst nightmare you know my home has always been really important to me but to you know have a secure home but to escape my marriage which was many years ago now nine years ago you know i had to flee and leave everything I left with two children, a car and a few carry bags of belongings. That's it. My income, my home, everything gone in one fell swoop. So, you know, but I had to be that was when that was when I really realized how much fear had backed me into a corner. You know, my life had got smaller and smaller and smaller. And I was finding it harder and harder to work money. When I was young, free and single, I was incredibly brave. People would say to me, do you want to come and work for me and do X? I had so many different jobs, everything from developing photographs to working in bars, to managing um, hotels, to 
working on magazines. I had so many different jobs. I was really, really confident. And it was, but my biggest hiccup was when I started to go into sort of more meaningful relationships because my only role model was the role models I've had as childhood. And that then all started to play out and I found my life getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So leaving my abusive marriage, that real step of bravery to go, do you know what? Fuck this life. This is not what I want. I've got to have faith that the universe is going to have my back and I'm just going to go was a massive leap of faith that the universe would have my back when my life was in a shocking state. I could have said, look, th there's no point in having faith because my life is terrible and the universe hasn't supported me. But the universe was giving me what I was vibrating at. So I had to say I'm no longer going to be available to that reality and take that leap of faith. And since that time, my life is absolutely transformed. You know, I have a beautiful home. I'm going to buy another home this year. Um, I have a business that I love, brings me more money than I've ever earned in my life, you know, and, and I'm helping women do the same. As I say, it's, it's so it's working with working with mindset and energy is an incredible, powerful process. When we work in fear, we also have a it has a very um, negative, I said, negative effect on our frequency, which is basically your aura and your chakras and the energy matrix that um, holds the blueprint for who we are. And people will feel that. People will feel that when you show up in life and business, they will unconsciously pick up on your vibration of fear or desperation or lack or scarcity. And they will feel that. And that will color your interactions with people. You will attract people also at that frequency. You'll attract people who can't afford to pay what you're offering. So this moving of fear also changes the lessons and the emotions held within the very cells of your body, held within your aura, held within your chakras, held within your DNA, everything. So shifting out of those fears to be able to allow light into your chakras and light codes and all sorts of things is a very, is a, it's not a complex process. We can make it very difficult and very woo if we want to. We can also make it incredibly simple. It's about having strong boundaries, knowing our worth, and take and um, being brave in our actions and having faith that the universe has our back we can all do it if i can do it anybody can do it so yeah those are the things i want you to think about really is how um what are your biggest fears in life where did you learn them from because have they actually ever happened are they really true or do you think oh they haven't happened because i've avoided doing anything where they might happen well, you've got no evidence they were going to happen. Not No evidence that the worst was going to happen. You know, the worst happened to me. I ended up in abusive marriage, alcoholic, and I had to flee and end up with nothing. The worst did happen because I manifested it. You know, I manifested it by making decisions based in fear. If I'd made decisions based in bravery, the worst wouldn't have happened. <laughs> so, and I brought, in, es in essence, I, I created that self-fulfilling prophecy. So where do those fears come from? Where do they come from your parents? Do they come from your peers? Something that you've read? Something that somebody's told you that was their experience? Doesn't mean it's going to be yours. And how have those fears affected your decisions in life? Because we can make decisions based on fear where we're just trying to avoid something happening and we think we've avoided it, but I can tell you, you won't. It'll come around and bite you on the bum later, which is exactly what happened to me. So think about how fear has affected your decisions in life. And then how what situations have those fears manifested because i can guarantee if you've had fears you've probably manifested them so it's having those fears about the, the fears you had about the thing that was going to happen it's the fears that have created that thing it's it's that simple so removing those fears and starting to look for the best and starting to expect the best means that the best will start to happen for you and just Talk to yourself firmly. If you find yourself slipping and thinking negative thoughts, just pull yourself up. You just go, oi, you, stop that. Hasn't happened. No guarantee it's going to happen. Stop expecting it to happen. Start thinking that this is going to happen and consciously visualize the best things. Consciously ask yourself positive questions. What, what if, you know, why is it that it's so easy for me to attract all this money? Why am I a happy money magnet? Why is it so easy for me to attract these wonderful opportunities? Why is it so easy for me to attract the perfect partner? Start asking yourself positive questions rather than questions based on fear. Stop thinking, why do I not get a break? Why does the worst always happen to me? Why is everything so hard? Those questions 
inform your unconscious beliefs, which inform your actions, which mean you approach life with timidity, cap in hand, expecting very little. So that's what life gives you. So fear is one of the crucial things that um, to break down to start manifesting your dreams. So I hope you felt that found that helpful. If you've not watched me before, my name is Faye Semple and I am the um, spiritual and energy embodiment coach for successful female entrepreneurs to help them step into their powerful purpose, increase their impact and income and live the life of freedom and abundance that they deserve. If you want to hop over to my Facebook group, Divine, Fem sorry, I've changed the name, the Quantum Success Circle, I will put the link in um, below and you can come and join the group. We do more in-depth training in there every week about mindset, but also energy work. I run um, masterclasses and challenges and all sorts of things in there. So come over and join us. Nice little group. Really lovely group. And um, yeah, I will see you next week. So yeah, but I'll be back on here for the reconnect next Thursday. OK, see you all soon then. Bye.